So by using Intune for Education, your school or organisation can quickly and simply manage classroom PCs or labs from a web browser. Intune for Education is accessible in the cloud from anywhere, and even if those PCs are not on site, they can still be easily managed from the Intune for Education portal. You can deploy apps and change settings on those PCs very quickly before a lesson starts or in a much more structured way as part of planned use. The best way to start using Intune for Education is to grab a free trial for 90 days from the Intune for Education website. If you head over there and click the button to start your trial, you'll need to be an Office 365 administrator. It adds the service to your Office 365 tenant. And once you decide to buy Intune for Education, you'll need to contact your favourite reseller to do this properly. Once Intune for Education is added to your Office 365 tenant, the best way to get to it is to go into the Office 365 Admin Centre and choose the Admin Centre's option at the bottom of the menu. From there, you can open Intune for Education. You can get there directly by going to any web browser and typing intuneeducation.portal.azure.com. It will ask you to log in with your normal Office 365 administrator credentials. So this is the Intune for Education dashboard. You can customize the panels later on depending on how you use Intune for Education. Intune for Education works in a very simple way. Devices are added to groups. Those groups could be the name of a classroom, the name of a subject, or however your organization decides to set them up. By default, any PC that is added to Intune for Education will be put in the All Devices group, but I can very easily create my own group. And before I add any PCs to my group, I can make some customizations. Adding apps is very simple. If I go to the Apps tab and press Edit, I can choose which apps are going to be installed when devices are added to my new group. I can install the Office desktop apps, which will be downloaded and installed as full featured versions for anyone who has a Pro Plus license in their Office 365 tenant. I could also install web apps that would link me to my Office 365 environment online, as well as installing purchased store apps such as Minecraft in Education. Most of your time, I suspect, is going to be spent inside device settings. I can very easily change basic device settings, turn the camera on or off, stop OneDrive from syncing, turn off removable storage, turn Cortana on or off, as well as many other different settings. As soon as you've made a change, you'll notice that the Save button becomes visible so that you can save your changes and apply them to any machine that is in that group. These settings apply very quickly, so it could be done in a hurry, or in a more structured way. I can also control the behavior of Microsoft Edge, the web browser that is by default added in Windows 10 S, and also available in Windows 10 Professional and Education. I can change homepage settings, search suggestions, and many more aspects of this browser. I can alter Windows Defender. I can change Wi-Fi settings and proxy settings for my school, which is often a really useful feature if you're behind firewalls. I can change Wi-Fi profiles and settings for apps. I can change the wallpaper on the lock screen to match my school's branding, as well as many, many other items that would normally be found inside group policy on Windows Server. Inside email settings, I can configure an email account that would be part of that PC. We can also change the addition of Windows that exists on that PC, enterprise or education. When done, to apply the settings, just click the blue Save button and all of those settings will be applied. At any point, I can go back and change these settings and they will update dynamically each time. 